On today's video, we are going to get into the zone. Hi everyone, welcome to Palda Tech. Today we're talking about zone autofocusing on Fujifilm cameras. Autofocus modes can be confusing to new camera users. I do have an older video on the subject of Fujifilm focus modes of the X-T3 and I will link to that in the description below. But in today's video, we are gonna be focusing specifically on zone autofocus. So what is zone autofocus exactly? Well, in order to explain that, let's first understand single point focus. In your camera's menu, you can set the different types of focus modes here. And this is one of those camera menu items that I absolutely recommend you assign to a shortcut button. I have mine assigned right here to this top D-pad button so I can just go boom and there it is. So if you're in single point autofocus right here, wherever the focus point is, that's what your camera is going to focus on. You see that? Now this works for both S and C, continuous focus modes on the camera. The main difference here is that when the camera is in C mode, the camera is continuously scanning the frame and adjusting focus. And if you're new to this and you wanna make things a bit easier, I recommend you go into the menu and make sure that pre-autofocus is turned on. Once you've done that, you don't need to be half pressing down the shutter button. The camera will constantly be checking focus and adjusting. However, keep in mind that this does use more battery power. Now, taking this a step further, think of zone autofocus focus as a collection of a bunch of single autofocus points all grouped together represented inside a frame in your camera that you can adjust the size of. Simply press one time on the joystick, boom, like that. You then rotate the rear command dial and you have three different settings, small, medium, and large. And then within the boundaries of this collection, the camera will have a fixed set of focus points that the camera will start using together and calculating for both single point and zone autofocus. Where zone can be very helpful is when your subject is in motion, either moving toward you or away from you. So for example, take a look at this scene right here. I have a dog running right at me. When I shot this, I had it in single point autofocus. Not the best idea in the world. I had a lot more shots in focus of the dog when I had it in zone autofocus. Okay, let's take a look now at a perfect case for using zone autofocus. Have a look at this. The subject is moving erratically, you see that? And the camera is locking on to the subject even though there's other things the camera could be focusing on in the background. It's great when you know where your subject will be, more or less, but you don't have enough time to set focus with single point. However, if you are trying to capture something that may suddenly jump into frame suddenly, such as a bird or a car, then I'd recommend perhaps not use using zone autofocus and instead using tracking. When you set it to wide tracking, Fujifilm is using the entire frame in the camera to do its calculations, not just that little zone area. And while it sounds like that would be the best use case in all scenarios, it's not. It's better to use zone when you can than wide tracking because it's less calculations the camera has to make and it's less room for error. Now on Fujifilm cameras, you can choose either 117 or 425 points, but this only applies if you're using single point autofocus. The minute that you put it into zone autofocus, you lose the 425 point option. Watch, I'll put it in zone, I'll go back to the menu and have a look at this. It's grayed out, you see that? It's 117, whether you like it or not. Now, what I've found with regard to the size of the zone, you know, the square, is that you don't want it too large and you don't want it too small. Just right in the middle, I think, is the best place to be. Now, regardless of the size that you set your autofocus zone, whether it's small, medium, or large, one really important thing you need to consider in order for it to do its job correctly is contrast. The more contrast that you have between your focus zone and the background, the better. Lack of contrast can really trip it up and cause your camera to get confused. And another factor that can affect the reliability of your zone autofocus is your depth of field. Obviously, if you have the camera lens opened all the way up to say f2 or f1.4, it's going to be a bit more difficult for your camera to get you reliable zone autofocus. However, when you stop down your lens to a small 
smaller aperture, you'll get a wider depth of field and the more quickly and more easily that your camera will then be able to lock onto your subject when using zone autofocus. Now, a big beginner mistake I see new Fujifilm users make is that they will try out autofocus, they'll set their camera to AFC, they'll set it to zone, and then they'll get a bunch of blurry shots. And they'll complain that maybe the zone autofocus on this camera doesn't work very well. <sighs> There's just one setting on the camera that I get stunned over and over again as to how few Fujifilm users know about and use on a regular basis. Now, the setting is so obvious to me because I sit around here and I make videos about camera settings, but so many people new to Fuji either miss it or they, they just don't think about it. And I'm talking about this setting right here. This has such a significant impact on your zone autofocus. And that's because you're telling the camera what elements of your scene are important to you as the photographer and what you want prioritized to be in focus. Now, if you're unsure as to what to set here, then experiment. But I found that number two, ignore obstacles and continue to track subject, as well as number four for a suddenly appearing subject generally works really well right out of the gate if you want to try something. However, to really get the most out of zone autofocus, you are going to want to set a custom setting right here. And what settings you make here will all depend on your shooting situation. You basically have three parameters here. Tracking sensitivity, speed tracking sensitivity, and zone area switching. Tracking sensitivity tells the camera how long it should stay locked on to your subject. This is a big deal if your subject is around other subjects and you want to keep tracking your subject. Let's take a look at this. Okay, look at this. I've got my camera set to zone autofocus. I'm tracking the main subject. There's another subject I'm about to get in the way, but look, the camera stays on the main subject. This is really important. You do not want your camera switching from the main subject you're trying to shoot over to somebody that's getting in the way, <laughs> right? So here's what you need to know about this setting. The higher you set the numerical value, the longer the camera will continue to stay locked on to your initial subject. Basically, it's like this. When you have it set to zero, your camera's all over the place. It's like, oh, ah, subject, ah, get it, yeah, 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 yeah like that. But when you have it set higher, okay, say to four, your camera's very focused. It, the whole world could be collapsing around it and it's locked right into your subject and nothing, no matter what's going on, is going to distract your camera from focusing on that subject. Right? Let's take a look at speed tracking sensitivity. You've got three values here, zero, one, and two. This setting allows you to tell your camera how your subject is moving. Is your subject moving steady and easy and consistently, or is your subject like a two-year-old toddler, you know, moving all the way around just erratically and randomly? If your subject is moving slowly and predictably, then you want to set this to zero. But if your subject is running all over the place, then set it to two. And this will tell the camera and its subsequent algorithms to be on the lookout for a fast changing and erratically moving subject. And lastly, we come to zone area switching. Now, this is an interesting one. It allows you to tell the camera what inside that section, that square of that autofocus zone, you want most of all to be in focus. So for example, if you have it set to center, the camera is going to assume more or less that the subject is right in the center of your zone most of the time, and it will update its autofocus calculations accordingly. Okay, so watch this. I'm gonna set my camera's autofocus mode to zone, and I'm gonna make the size of the autofocus square medium, and I have two subjects in my image. I've got this little Lego guy right here, and I've got Thanos, <laughs> right? Okay, I'm gonna put Thanos right in the center of the image. Okay, there's Thanos. Thanos. Now I'm going to slowly start to move this subject into the frame. Look at that. Nothing's happening. No focus. Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. 
There we go. It got to the center. The camera said, oh, you're in the center. And it focused. But now let's change this to front. So now you are telling the camera that regardless of whether the subject is on the right side or the left side, you want your camera to focus and give priority on any subject that is closest to the camera. Distance from the subject becomes the priority. I've got my zone square right in the middle on Thanos. The camera's focused on Thanos. Nothing, nothing. No, look, look at that. You see that? It focused right in on it. Even though it's not in the center, this subject is closer to the camera than this subject. This is close. Whoops. <laughs> this is closer, so it became in focus even though it was not in the center of the image. And of course, auto, like everything else, tells the camera to, you take care of it, you do all the thinking, I, I'm, leave me out of it. And lastly, with regard to zone autofocus, how does face eye auto detect fit in? Well, face eye auto detect simply uses zone autofocus, but it has a special algorithm that keeps the focus zone within the confines of someone's face. Okay, so right here I've got zone autofocus. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over here, but I am going to turn on face eye auto detect. Zone is not anywhere near my face, but look at that, see? It knew that my face was where my face is and it said, oh, I better focus on your face. The point here is to make sure that you are completely familiar with using these custom settings because it has a huge effect on zone autofocus. I see a lot of complaints about Fujifilm and their autofocus. Some of those complaints are very valid. Some I've seen from people who are not using and or not quite familiar with how to make sure that their zone autofocus focus is set correctly using what I just showed you. So give it a spin, test it out, and see if it works for you. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will be signing off now, but have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you in a new video very soon. Take care.